Hello, and uh, welcome to Airbud Entertainment backs up 90 terabytes of data in 30 minutes using Cohesity and AWS. Uh, just a few housekeeping items for us to, uh, before we get started. Uh, one, when you uh, join today's webinar, uh, you selected to join either by phone call or uh, on audio on your computer. Uh, if for any reason you want to change that selection during uh, the webinar, you can uh, do so by accessing the audio pane in your control panel. Um, in addition, uh, in the control panel, you have the opportunity to submit questions to today's presenters by typing those questions into the, uh, the question pane. And we're going to collect those questions and address them during the QA session at the end of today's presentation. Uh, if for any reason we're not able to get to your uh, question, uh, we'll plan on responding to each of you personally through email. Uh, the deck will also be made available through, uh, through SlideShare along with uh, recording of the webinar in about uh, two to three days after the conclusion of the presentation. So keep an eye out uh, uh, for your email. So my name is uh, Henry Axrod and uh, I'm a partner solution architect here at uh, Amazon Web Services, and I'll be your host and moderator for today's webinar. In addition to myself, uh, I am uh, joined uh, today with uh, uh, Douglas uh, Coe, who is the Director of Product uh, Marketing at Cohesity, and going to be telling you a little bit about Cohesity's uh, solution. Uh, as well as uh, Tyson Clark, who's the technical director at Airbud Entertainment, uh, who is a customer of Cohesity and AWS, and going to be telling you a little bit about uh, their deployment. With uh, that being said, I want to start off by uh, talking a little bit about um, about AWS and specifically backup and, re and restore on AWS. So to start off with, uh, uh, I want to let everyone know a little bit about how AWS uh, uh, has, uh, how AWS infrastructure is set up. AWS has a global infrastructure that's set up into uh, geographic regions that are uh, spread throughout the world. Uh, at present, AWS has uh, 21 different geographical regions, and within those regions, we have uh, 66 availability zones. Now, an availability zone is uh, similar to a, a data center, and those uh, and it can be comprised of one building or multiple buildings. It's at least one single building. We don't have availability zones that are uh, less than a single uh, building, uh, and we uh, group those availability zones into. Uh, geographic area, which we call a region. Uh, now, those availability zones are separated by a meaningful distance and uh, protected against uh, any kind of uh, joint failures. Uh, now, we, uh, in addition to the uh, current regions availability zones that we have, AWS is uh, continuing to uh, expand, and we have announced four additional regions and 12 additional availability zones that we plan to uh, deploy. In the... So when we think about um, the real components of storage solutions on the AWS platform, uh, we, th we think of uh, three main components, and these components uh, interconnect and work together. Uh, the first component that we um, that we think about is AWS services. And uh, this can include storage services as well as other AWS services. AWS has uh, over 165 unique services uh, that we currently offer, and these provide customers with uh, scalability, durability, elasticity, and, uh, and uh, cloud economics. Uh, to run whatever their uh, workloads or uh, or needs are in terms of of data. Uh, in addition to what AWS storage offers, uh, AWS uh, technology partners uh, add to that by integrating their uh, on-premises solution as well as building solutions on AWS that add additional advanced 
uh, functionality to the uh, the services that AWS offers. Um, lastly, there is consulting partners, and so consulting partners uh, help customers uh, with both AWS services as well as with uh, technology partner solutions to really help uh, deploy and manage their uh, their total um, you know solution. So in terms of um, AWS storage services specifically, um, AWS has a wide variety of, uh, of storage services. Here's just a representation of some of the main categories of storage services that we have and some of the key services within those categories. So AWS offers uh, services in file like our Amazon uh, uh, EFS and Amazon FSx, as well as uh, block storage that provides uh, block level storage to, uh, to EC2 instances uh, running on the uh, AWS platform like Amazon EBS and Amazon EC2 instance storage. Uh, as well, when we think about uh, backup use cases, uh, some of the most uh, popular services are object storage, which, uh, which is uh, our Amazon Simple Storage service, uh, otherwise known as Amazon S3, as well as uh, Amazon S3 Glacier services. Uh, in addition to the storage services themselves, AWS also offers a wide variety of data transfer options to help customers uh, get their data to AWS in more efficient manners. Uh, these uh, offerings include things like AWS Direct Connect that gives customers a, uh, a dedicated connection directly from their facilities or their colo facility to uh, to an AWS region, and things like AWS Snowball that gives customers a, a ruggedized uh, uh, a ruggedized storage device that gets shipped to their uh, their data center uh, that can be loaded with data and then sent up to AWS. So in regards to uh, to Amazon S3, uh, there are several different uh, storage classes. And these storage classes are, uh, are different uh, tiers of data that customers can utilize to manage their end-to-end -end, uh, data lifecycle. So anything from active data on our, uh, our standard storage class for Amazon S3, as well as our uh, fairly recently released standard intelligent tiering storage class, which can uh, manage data between standard and frequently accessed uh, tiers automatically for customers. Uh, and as that data starts becoming uh, less frequently accessed, uh, we offer uh, two uh, storage classes, which is our standard infrequently accessed class and our one zone infrequently accessed class. Uh, then as customers need to uh, to archive that data or store it for long-term retention, uh, we offer uh, Amazon S3 Glacier, as well as the uh, fairly recently released Amazon S3 Glacier Deep Archive uh, for, uh, for improved uh, to TCO. So when we look at uh, what customers uh, generally see as challenges, uh, from a on-premises uh, point of view, uh, is you know the uh, the the underlying uh, infrastructure is uh, is difficult to manage. You know, there's a lot of uh, manual management aspects to that uh, infrastructure. You know, especially as we talk about being able to scale that infrastructure, adding additional uh, disk or tape uh, capacity, uh, or even you know compute capacity as your uh, running those on-premises uh, backup systems. Uh, it's also very costly in terms of being able to build and maintain those systems from a, uh, a hardware perspective. Uh, in addition, we see a lot of customers that now more and more need to meet uh, various different uh, compliance regulations, which is uh, often difficult to achieve with, uh, with traditional backup and recovery methods. So one of some of the benefits that, AW, that uh, AWS Backup and Restore uh, brings to the table. Uh, well, for, for one, uh, it's an it's a integrated solution. Uh, 
Uh, so customers are able to, uh, to, to really uh, optimize their solution by not just integrating with you know, a singular AWS service, but being able to take advantage of uh, the various AWS services that are, that are offered as part of the, uh, the platform. Uh, it's also a highly secure uh, environment uh, with AWS offering uh, encryption uh, and many different encryption options on our services, including encryption for data in transit as well as data in rest uh, and very tight uh, access controls. Uh, it's also very easy to uh, to not only maintain but to uh, to set up and provision. Uh, uh, customers are able to simply go into the uh, the AWS console and could uh, provision any services that they need. Uh, it also, in terms of uh, scalability, uh, you know, customers have uh, the ability to scale as well as as to use cust as to use resources in an elastic uh, way. Uh, for example, with uh, Amazon uh, S3. Uh, customers get uh, virtually unlimited uh, scalability in terms of capacity, so customers don't need to uh, pre-purchase, uh, you know, uh, capacity or to worry about running out of storage or running out of tapes uh, that that they might face on premises. Uh, and uh, lastly, uh, customers are able to really lower their uh, their costs since. Uh, most services on AWS are paid for just what you uh, what you consume, so um, you're not having to again, you know, purchase uh, you know uh, capacity, uh, you know, ahead of time that may not be utilized. You're able to just uh, pay for what you're uh, what you're utilizing. So, what are some of the uh, the benefits that AWS? Uh, you know, storage competency partners bring to the uh, the table. As I mentioned earlier in the webinar, that uh, that AWS uh, technology partners uh, bring a lot of a advanced uh, features or functionality, and uh, they also make the uh, help make uh, the, the process of configuring uh, your backups uh, uh, very easy. Uh, they offer uh, different functionality uh, like policy-based backups, uh, incremental backups, and other uh, advanced features that uh, customers uh, can help utilize to, uh, to create an efficient backup solution. They can also uh, help customers to uh, rapidly recover that data that's been uh, stored in, uh, on Amazon storage services. As, as well as create a uh, complete cost, completely cost-effective solution for customers. So, uh, you know, as I mentioned earlier, uh, that uh, AWS offers, uh, you know, a lot of uh, security services and encryption services. But uh, in addition to that, uh, uh, AWS helps customers with uh, compliance requirements. AWS uh, has uh, many uh, uh, certification and assurance programs that uh, we work with. These are just some of the key ones, but AWS has over 200 different um, uh, secure, uh, certification and assurance programs that, uh, that we do uh, work with. Uh, some of the examples that you can see here are Things like ISO 2717 and 2718 for cloud security and cloud privacy. Things like SOC 1, SOC 2, and SOC 3. Um, customers could be HIPAA and PCI compliant on the AWS platform as well as, uh, as GDPR compliant. Uh, we even in, uh, have um, customers who uh, can be uh, FedRAMP compliant as well as uh, as ITAR compliant for our, uh, our governmental customers. With that uh, being said, I'd like to uh, turn the floor over to uh, to Douglas, who's going to take you a little bit through the uh, Cohesity solution. Hey, thanks, Henry. And uh, again, uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening to our audience here. And uh, 
as Henry mentioned, uh, I'm Doug Coe, and I'm responsible for uh, product marketing of our cloud solutions here at Cohesity. So, you know, let's give you a quick overview about, you know, Cohesity and the cloud solutions that we, we bring to market. Um, you know, one of the first things, you know, I like to talk about to our customers and prospective customers is the Cohesity data platform, you know, is a software defined platform that we built from the ground up, right, for the cloud. So, you know, what that means is it's, it wasn't, the cloud was never an afterthought. Uh, it's the same software, right, that runs on-premises, that also runs on AWS, on, on the cloud, on EC2. And it's built on a web scale modern architecture uh, that actually originated from, uh, you know, from the same architect and, and uh, you know, in our founder that worked on the Google file system that really allows you to have, you know, the tremendous web scale on the back end of our platform, but the same flexibility to enable our customers to deploy this both on-prem and in the cloud. You know, we also, you know, given it's built for, uh, from the ground up for cloud, we've also optimized it for our enterprise customers. Uh, you know, first and foremost, you know, a good chunk of our customers come from the enterprise and many of them uh, take advantage of our cloud capabilities today. And, and, and that's because of our feature set, rich feature set. You know, that comes down to some of the security and efficiency that's built into the platform, whether that be you know, data encryption in flight or at rest, uh, or whether it be you know, some of the enterprise capabilities around data storage, such as data deduplication, compression, and erasure coding, which effectively will help you reduce your storage costs as well as your overall cloud costs as well too, which I'll talk a, a little bit more in detail. So, you know, when I said it's built from the ground up for cloud, you know, that includes your know, native cloud integration, right, to, to Amazon uh, and AWS, you know, leveraging the native cloud APIs that's available. Uh, and that could mean, you know, both our on-prem platform talking to the cloud, as well as the platform running directly on the cloud, uh, leveraging some of the native cloud APIs. The goal of our solution is really to solve the bigger problem of mass data fragmentation, where you know, we, we are now seeing you know, the plethora of data silos and infrastructure silos across on-premises, across clouds, across edge devices and mobile devices that you know, are, are really making the lives of users and the lives of IT uh, practitioners harder. And, and our goal is really to solve that by unifying and protecting that data across locations, you know, everywhere where, where they may exist. So that means that you're able to manage data and protect it across your cloud, public cloud and hybrid cloud environment, both on-prem and, and in the cloud. It means the ability to protect cloud native workloads, such as you know, your, your cloud first apps uh, that you've built on AWS and, and EC2, uh, to any SaaS application you may have built on top of AWS as well too, and all the way down to the legacy infrastructure uh, that you're probably running on premises from your Oracle to your SAP, to your Microsoft platform, your VMware platforms, all those legacy uh, infrastructure and platforms and, and all your new cloud native platforms and, and workloads, really the ability to back up anything, right, along that spectrum and recover it anywhere. And that's gonna be very important as well too, as we talk about the different use cases we, we address with Cohesity. The last area we're really trying to push and address is, is really, you know, the goal of most organizations today, right, is spend less time managing your infrastructure and more time around transformation and innovation. And that's really what we're trying to do, right? Allow you to manage less and innovate more, whether it be having a global a SaaS-based uh, UI to manage uh, your platforms, again, across AWS, across hybrid, across on-premises, to providing you know, rich APIs and toolkits uh, to give developers and DevOps direct access to the data. Right, so you know, to automate the process of making data available, to automate the process of of spinning up data and spinning up uh, systems for your test dev environments, and then you know, finally, really allowing you to 
take advantage of this data. No longer is data just sitting there as an insurance policy, which you see with most traditional backup solutions, even, even ones that integrate to the cloud. Um, it's really allowing you to unlock and untap or tap into the data that's on the cohesive data platform and allowing you to run apps and unlock insights directly uh, from the data that you have stored and backed up. So where does this all start? Well, you know, first, you know, what we see for most of our customers, a, a big majority of our customers, and including Airbud, uh, which Tyson will talk about their situation and use uh, a little bit more in detail, uh, you know, many of our customers today start by leveraging Cohesity and AWS to eliminate tape and improve data access. And what does this really mean? Well, it means that you could use Cohesity to back up and protect your on-premises environment. Again, your VMware, your Oracle, your SAP, your Microsoft. You allow you to store uh, your certain amount on-premises. You know, typically, a lot of customers store maybe 30 days of their backups and information uh, online and on-premises for fast restore and recovery. But after that, you know, for whether it be for regulatory or compliance reasons, right, you need to store older backups right, instead of pushing those to tape and sending them off-site on a truck, right, you could send that directly to the cloud based on simple policy-based uh, rules, right? So you no longer do you need to go through a manual process of, of taping out, no longer do you need to go th through a different system or a different server, right? It's directly through our software, directly through policies, the data can be aged, and archive for long-term retention directly in, in the clouds, such as on you know, AWS or Amazon S3 or Glacier. Now, you know, lots of benefits around this. Again, it simplifies operations, uh, it eliminates tape. You know, it also helps reduce cloud costs. So again, with our deduplication and compression, uh, you know, you'll see significant savings in terms of the data transfer that's going on. You know, some, you know, some, uh, some solutions do push data to the cloud, but they do not have the same level of dedupe and compression that really helps reduce both your, your cloud storage costs as well as your data transfer costs, which, which in some cases can end up to be costing more than, than your actual storage costs. So again, you having this capability really has a, a tremendous amount of, of cost benefit uh, to a lot of customers. The other area is really, again, improving that data access no longer are you, you know, making a manual request, you know, maybe to retrieve a tape off-site and then load that tape into a tape library manually, uh, but now you could retrieve it directly through software, right, with 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 an API call or directly through the software GUI, and you know that that is much more granular. So again, you don't need to rely on a manual process, but you also have a lot of granularity to you know recover, say, a single VM or a single file. And that helps improve your recovery time, right? Again, no longer do you need to restore your entire environment or restore the entire tape, which may, may take a long time. You can quickly identify what you need, restore it quickly, and get back on, on track. Now, the second use case I alluded to is really around you know, some of your new cloud initiatives, right? Your, your, your cloud-first initiatives, your cloud-native apps, new apps or, or existing apps that you're migrating to, to AWS uh, or, or new apps that you're building on top of AWS. And you know, one of the cool things that we provide is you know, really native backup of your Amazon EC2 instances and Amazon uh, EBS uh, block storage uh, volumes. So, you know, there are a variety of solutions today, right? You could do manual snapshots of, of EBS uh, there's uh, Amazon backup uh, service as well too, but what we've done is really provide a very comprehensive solution, allowing you to back up your cloud native apps and your, your your EC2 instances directly on the Cohesity data platform, uh, leveraging the same snapshot API. So. What are the benefits? Well, number one is you get to consolidate your data onto on the Cohesity data platform. You get to leverage some of that dedupe and compression savings that, that I talked about in, in the last slide. And uh, for example, you just to put it in perspective, you know, we had one customer that was you know, backing up 
uh, you know, using just the standard uh, procedures on AWS. But ever since moving to the data platform, leveraging our DTP and compression, they've been able to reduce their cloud storage costs by, you know, anywhere from a factor of five, five X to 10 X, depending on the DTP and compression that they get. And again, you get to unify this across your entire platform and across your on-premises environment, allowing you a single pane of glass to view all your data uh, for hybrid cloud. So it's really a fast and efficient way to, to back up your, your EC2 instances and your cloud native apps. And it's very low impact because it doesn't impact those, those machines directly because we're leveraging the snapshot APIs and then ingesting the data from the snapshots rather than trying to run an agent or trying to back up the, those uh, instances directly. So, you know, the third and, you know, 3A and 3B use cases I, I like to talk about uh, is really around the ability to, to move, migrate, and spin up VMs from on-premises into AWS and into the cloud. So, if you have an on-premises environment, uh, uh, you know, most likely is running VMware, right, or Hyper-V as your uh, main uh, hypervisors and virtualization platforms. Our capabilities within Cohesive Data Platform and our cloud spin uh, capabilities is, is to take that VM on-prem, package it up, and automatically convert it to your Amazon AMI or, or AMI format. You know, it's a common problem for customers today because you know the on-premises world and the cloud world really speak different languages. And what we're doing here is really being that translation and conversion layer to, to translate that automatically. So you could take your, uh, your VMware or Hyper-V VM, automatically convert it, automatically spin it up as a as an EC2 instance uh, and have that up and running in in a matter of minutes. So so this is huge and that this really enables a couple of key use cases, right? The the first one is is disaster recovery or DR, right? And you know a lot of customers today, enterprise customers still have a second physical location or data center uh, that is you know what you call a pilot lit DR site. So they have a, a facility, a, a building, they have you know, all the networking infrastructure, they have all their servers and storage kind of sitting there waiting for a disaster to happen, right? That's a lot of resources that are going to waste, which in this case now, you're, you're able to leverage AWS's EC2 and S3 and EBS, all these things on a pay-as-you-go, pay pay as you use manner. And typically, again, you know, hopefully disasters are only happening less than 99.999% of the time. And even in that, you know, once every six months or what, whatever your test or uh, DR test schedule is, right, you only pay for those resources when you spin them up. So it allows for a huge savings, right, from a DR perspective. Uh, and, and we really see this as a big benefit to our customers. The other uh, use case that this leverages is around you know, enabling your developers and your DevOps uh, people to really spin up uh, a test dev environment very quickly. And for example, take on-premises data like your Oracle database or, or whatnot and make that available in the cloud. And again, this allows your developers to really test against that, develop against that very quickly, uh, create many, many copies. Uh, again, based on our architecture, it allows you to create many copies in any point in time uh, that you need it. Uh, so you could test out different code branches, test out different uh, uh, QA scenarios, and make that available to, to your developers and your DevOps uh, teams. So, you know, if I was to summarize, you know, some of the key points that Cohesity delivers for our customers running in the cloud is, there's really kind of six key things. You know, the one one area, as I alluded to, is that single pane of glass, that single uh, GUI or UI uh, for your hybrid cloud environment. So you get the same view into your data across on-premises and across the cloud, allowing you to consolidate and view all your data together. You know, for your developers and your cloud native environments, for everybody who is you know developing your new apps and 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 hybrid cloud apps. Right, we're providing instant data for those developers so they could innovate faster and, and then your DevOps could automate better and automate faster. So again, they could iterate fast, you know, learn fast, fail fast, and deploy faster as well too. 
from an efficiency standpoint, I alluded to this and talked about it uh, uh, you know, several times around deduplication, compression, and erasure coding. Uh, Again, you know, our customers are seeing anywhere from 5x to 10x savings. So this could be huge, right? And this, again, comes down to both your cloud storage costs, uh, as well as your on-premises infrastructure costs, to your data transfer costs as well, too. So it, it's it's a big deal. Uh, and what I do you know, tell customers to look for is, you know, various vendors and solutions will have some level of dedupe and compression. It's the implementation and how they do it, right? Is it global? What block sizes are they using? Uh, do they restrict you under, under uh, between on-premises and cloud? Uh, we've seen many implementations where, you know, the dedupe or compression might work well on-premises, but does not work at all or works a lot less uh, effectively in the cloud. So, you know, th things to look for and, and really kind of look for proof in the pudding in terms of what other customers have been able to achieve. Uh, you know, having your data available and having it stored is great. Finding the right data and having the ability to search for it is even better, right? So we have, you know, global actionable search that allows you to pinpoint, find and pinpoint the data, the file, uh, the VM that you need to restore. So I talked about that granular recovery. So finding what you need quickly and restoring it quickly is what's going to enable our, our customers th that fast recovery time. Uh, and then the ability to run apps. This is, again, a unique uh, perspective on the Cohesity platform is that not only are we a storage destination and a consolidation across your storage environment, but we actually enable you to run your analytics uh, workloads directly on our platform so you know today we, we we recently well we've recently launched our marketplace and today we have uh analytics platforms such as a uh, splunk that you could run directly on cohesity and directly in, in the cloud so you could faster uncover insights you know without needing to create a separate data lake or, or a separate data platform uh, uh you know, just to run analytics on and last but not least, again, I talked about this as one of the use cases to provide that native cloud protection, right, of your, your EC2 uh, infrastructures as service uh, apps, as well as any SaaS applications that have been built on top of AWS, right? Having that protection built in, having that across one platform, that's really going to deliver a big difference for our customers. So, you know, when, when we talk to customers, right, it's really about, you know, where do you want to go? Where do you want to start? And, you know, given all the breadth and depth of our capabilities with Cohesity, right, you really have any option you want. It can be, as I talked about, uh, long-term retention and archiving or tape replacement, right? That That's the most common. It can be, you know, full life cycle disaster recovery, you know, spinning up, moving and spinning up in the cloud as well as failing back. So again, it's, you know, some, sometimes some vendors might give you a one-way street. Uh, we actually give you the full fail over and fail back. It can be the test dev environments that I talked about to enable your uh, developers to really have that agile process and, and innovative process and iterative process across their software development, or it could be you know, around cloud native backup and, and really backing up your cloud first and cloud native applications. So with that, I'll just you know summarize to say you know, a little bit about Cohesity ourselves. Uh, you know, we're we're a relatively young company, right? Cohesi was founded about six years ago by uh, Mohit Aaron, and he's he was actually um, a co-founder at Nutanix as well as the lead engineer on the Google file system. I, I, I alluded to this, and that's kind of where we have this you know tremendous. Uh, pedigree as well as experience in building something that's web scale and something that is really designed for the modern data center and designed for a cloud first environment. And, you know, as a company, we've grown very rapidly. We, again, we've leveraged a lot of experience from, you know, different companies and, and different executives on our team. But, you know, as a company, we've, we've you know, had 300% revenue growth. A vast majority of our customers are on an enterprise with with actually you know, over over a thousand customers now, and we're backed by you know, leading uh, venture capital and investment firms such as uh, SoftBank and Sequoia Capital. So you know you'll also see here that you know 
I already mentioned thousands, you know, over a thousand customers and, and a lot of you know, familiar faces and logos on the right hand side of the slide. But again, I, I won't get into any of these in, in detail, but rather you know, I'll let uh, Tyson at Earbud to really talk about uh, you know, their story and how they're leveraging you know, both AWS and Cohesity to achieve uh, their backup and recovery goals. Awesome. Thank you, Doug. Um, so I'm Tyson from Airbud. I'm the technical director, IT manager, whatever anyone wants to call me at any given time. Change slides. So Airbud's been making uh, kid-friendly movies for the last 20 years. We actually have over 20 of them now. And right now we're using uh, Cohesity with AWS for our short-term and long-term backups with uh, archival for as long as we... Uh, kind of need. So our biggest issues was we had failed tapes. They're also uh, aging out, so we have to keep changing them over to everything, uh, to the new version or faster ones, whatever the deal was. Restoring files took a long time. We had to go down to our data or uh, storage depot. We'd have to search through boxes, try to find just the tapes we need. We're constantly buying more tapes because the movies are getting bigger. We're moving to 4K now, so you'd have four times the amount of tapes for something we'd have, say, a regular number four. There is no way for us to easily get our files to the cloud for long-term backup and to make it so we don't have to keep looking for those tapes. And we also were having issues with our backup software where it would fail after about a week of trying to back up a single project. Uh, each one of our projects has about three to five million files, so just even indexing all those files was near impossible. So. What we did was we were looking for a new solution. We needed something that was extremely quick. We needed something that would tie in with AWS or another cloud provider. And we needed something that was super easy so that way if I had a training guy here, I could teach him how to create a backup, do a backup, manage it, all that kind of stuff quickly before I'm heading out on vacation because I don't want phone calls on vacation. So what we implemented was Cohesity for our on-site backup. It pulls everything off our NAS pools. We have actually three of them. We have an Isilon, a Cumulo, and a uh, Nexus. Puts it onto itself, catalogs it all, so that way we can easily, quickly search and do pretty much instant restores of whatever we need. Once it's on the Cohesity overnight, it actually pushes it out to AWS Glacier. And from there, it's going to sit for 10, 15, 20 years, whatever we've determined we need to keep that archive for. Uh, this is a quick look at our dashboard. As you can see, we've got five jobs that ran in the last 24 hours. That'd be a Cumulo, an Isilon, a Nexus backup, and then we have two VM servers. So it's all nicely backed up. Uh, never had an issue with any of them failing other than maybe if a file was open, but it's great for that. It also gives you a quick warning if it is. So it's nice to be able to log in, see that and go. Uh, as you can see, we've got right now about 140 terabytes on the actual Cohesity. That's the current movie we're working on, and we've pushed about 2.3 petabytes total, I think, to the cloud now. So we've actually got quite a bit larger. And all of this happens within about 30 to 40 minutes, pushing to the cloud a bit longer because our internet connection is a bit slow. So what we've been able to do is we've been able to take our backups from a week to two weeks just to get that one backup done down to about 30 minutes, and then it just pushes to the cloud seamlessly. We've saved money on our storage facility for the tapes, which was not the best. We had a lot of failed tapes due to fluctuations in temperatures. Uh, we've been able to remove a full person from our staff to uh, manage and watch the actual backup to make sure that it caught all of the files that we had. Because like I said, we have three to five million files per movie. And if you lose one of those frames, the whole movie's kind of thrown out of whack. And we are also able to easily push and pull back from the cloud without having to go down to the day, uh, the locker, find that file, put it in, and then try to fight with the uh, backups that we have going on because you can only either backup or restore one thing at a time versus Cohesity allows us to do both a backup and a restore at the same time. So I'm going to pass it back to you, uh, Henry, and thank you. Thanks very much, uh, uh, Tyson, for that uh, that uh, great story about uh, how Airbud is using uh, Cohesity and AWS. Uh, at this point, we're going to uh, transition into our 
uh, our live Q and A session. Uh, just as a reminder, um, you know, any um, uh, questions you have, you can submit them uh, through the uh, the question panel. And in the event that we're not able to uh, address your uh, your question today as in during this uh, question session uh, we'll follow up with everybody individually via email uh, so to get us uh, started here I have a, uh, a question in regards to uh, Cohesity's support for uh, AWS uh, storage classes. So, Doug, I think this question will be to you, and specifically, uh, which uh, uh, AWS uh, or which Amazon S3 storage classes uh, does Cohesity support? Yeah, no, uh, you know, good question, uh, Henry. And yeah, we pretty much support uh, all uh, S3 storage classes. You know, obviously, you know, the the classic S3 and Glacier, uh, that's been supported for a while. And uh, we recently actually added support for uh, you know, S3 uh, IA, right? Infrequent access, uh, as well as one zone uh, as well too. And um, I forget the other one. There's one where you guys manage, um, manage the S3 intelligent tiering. Yeah, ex an intelligent tiering. So we recently added those uh, storage classes as well too. So it really gives our customers, you know, full liberty and capability to you know, best fine tune, right? The, the SLAs that they want, both from a cost perspective, as well as a, a, a retrieval time perspective, and you know, whether they want uh, to manage it through our software themselves, or whether to have uh, AWS manage it as well too. So yeah, it, it really have you know, comprehensive support across the board. Yeah, so it, so it sounds like Cohesity supports pretty much, uh, uh, you know, all the uh, the storage classes, uh, you know, that AWS has made available, giving customers a lot of flexibility uh, to really choose the right place to uh, to put their data. As I mentioned earlier in the webinar, uh, customers can really move their data uh, to, you know, the storage class that uh, best meets their situation or their life cycle of, uh, of that data. Um, and I think we heard um, uh, Tyson from your side that also Airbud is uh, uh, kind of using it in that way, right? You mentioned even uh, being moving things to uh, to Glacier for uh, for long term retention. That sounds like even in some cases you're maintaining for years. Is that uh, correct? Yeah, we have to keep all of our assets for at least ten years, so we're pushing it to Glacier. It sits up there. It doesn't cost us much compared to uh, try to keep a tape safe for that long. Yeah, absolutely, great point. Um, okay, so uh, moving on to the uh, the next question. Um, so uh, this question seems to be in regards to, um, to the actual um, amount of, of uh, data that was uh, that was uh, part of the the core message of this uh, title, being able to you know do this uh, this setup in uh, about 30 minutes uh, for uh, 90 terabytes of backup. And uh, this question may be, I think, to uh, to you, Tyson, in regards to did you see any type of uh, performance impact when uh, when uh, doing this um, this backup or um, or going to Cohesity and AWS? So I haven't seen any performance issues, mostly because we run the backup after everyone's left the office and it only takes about 30 minutes to pull it from our ISIL on our Cumulo to the Cohesity. And then once it's on the actual Cohesity, it's pushing it out to the cloud. There's no issues whatsoever that can run for a couple hours a day. It doesn't make any difference to us. Great, excellent. Thank you, uh, Tyson, for that. Um, all right. Uh, another question here is: um, uh, d Does uh, Cohesity support uh, disaster recovery uh, for uh, for VMware to AWS? So I think Doug, maybe you want to uh, take that one. Yeah, yeah. I, you know, I, I talked about that in during our presentation a little bit. Uh, and, and that's really around our capabilities with uh, CloudSpin and our data platform, where we have the capability of taking a VMware on-premises instance 
and automatically you're converting that to the AMI format, to the you know, Amazon format that runs on EC2, and then automatically spinning up your EC2 instance as well too. So, so yeah, it, that does enable DR uh, quite, quite quite readily. Uh, and not only your know, customers actually have two options with, with cloud spin. One is on demand, which again you just pick the VM and say, hey, let's spin this up in the cloud. Uh, we also have something called policy based. Uh, Cloud spin, which allows you again, just like your backup policy, you can set up a DR policy to say, you know, every, uh, you know, every week or every month or whenever you want to test it, or you know, based on a certain version of of your data or your backup, right? Spin that, uh, spin that copy up, and and run it on uh, EC2. Uh, you know, we have those capabilities too, and yeah, it's it's a pretty big deal because again, I, as I alluded to, you know, the formats aren't you know completely. Uh, com aren't compatible by default in terms of your VMware format and the AMI format. So we, what we try to do is really simplify that, automate that, so customers could move their data uh, over to the cloud very quickly and, again, be able to achieve DR or, or whatnot uh, in a relatively fast time to achieve their SLAs and their RTO, RPL object objectives. Thanks, Doug. And I think just to uh, just to add to that, you know, AWS offers a wide variety of EC2 instance types, so it really creates a you know that um, flexibility for whatever the um, customer for whatever customers are running on premises. Uh, they can now use the um, all the different types of uh, AWS instances, and AWS currently offers over 175 different. Uh, different types of instances that customers can use, whether that's uh, for just general compute purposes, like perhaps when, uh, or bursable compute purposes, perhaps when uh, you're doing a DR test uh, to, you know, full-blown, highly performant instances, whether, whether they're compute intensive, memory intensive, storage intensive, or even requiring things like, uh, like GPUs can, uh, can be run on the platform. So you have that wide variety of use cases. And then uh, for DR uh, specifically, it's really a uh, great use case because uh, you, you don't have to uh, have just hardware uh, lying around in some data center, um, you know, waiting for that uh, DR event. You're able to spin up on demand those, uh, those EC2 instances that you need, uh, you know, when you need them. Uh, and uh, you know can size them up or down to whatever is uh, needed for that particular DR situation, whether it's a DR test or a full uh, DR scenario. Okay, um, moving on to the uh, the next question. Uh, so there's a couple of similar questions. I think I'll just uh, summarize, uh, which is. Um, uh, I think this one will be for uh, you, Doug, in terms of um, what are some of the um, the typical, uh, you know, industries or uh, or uh, clients that um, the Cohesity solution, uh, you know, help, helps with. Are there are there any um, are, are there any key industries, or do you work across, uh, you know, all different uh, industries and verticals? Yeah, no, that, that's another great question. Um, you know, I would say that you know, from from our perspective, you know, data backup and then you know, modernization of that infrastructure and then the ability to move and replicate and, and consolidate over on premises and cloud. You know, I think that's a pretty broad industry problem. So from that perspective, you know, we're seeing a wide range of industries adopt this. Uh, and again, you know, there's research that shows, you know, there might be certain uh, industries that might be a little bit ahead or behind in terms of their cloud adoption. I'm sure you guys might have some data on that too. Uh, one thing I will say is, and, and maybe Tyson can echo this, you know, I think you know, for specifically the use case of tape replacement, right, I think that might be, you know, in, in his area around media entertainment, they have traditionally used a lot of tape, you know, whether it be from the traditional uh, movie reels to, to you know, digitization of that. So definitely from a tape perspective, I think, you know, in, in his area, uh, media entertainment is, is pretty common. But on, on the flip side, right, we, we've seen, you know, 
companies like in fi financial services leverage our platform uh you know companies in retail le leverage our platform uh so it, it really is a wide range and because we address all these different use cases from as i said archiving and tape replacement to test and dev to dr to cloud native um you know it, we really do see a wide range range of, of industry so it really depends on the use case that uh, that that you're looking to implement yeah yeah definitely um i, I think that uh you know is uh true for cohesi as well as aws we see uh customers uh across a uh a wide uh variety of industries i don't think there's any you know industry that uh, that doesn't currently use uh, AWS in some type of uh, in a meaningful way. All right, um, I think we have time for a couple more uh, questions. Um, so the uh, the next question is, uh, how does uh, the Cohesity uh, data platform, you know, help to reduce uh, backup times by uh, uh, by so much? Yeah, no, that, that's another good question. And I somewhat alludes to, I think, the question for Tyson earlier as well, too. Um, I mean, you know, we could get into a lot of the weeds in terms of our architecture uh, and, and how that helps. I mean, number one is it does come from the fact that we are built on a, a web scale, scale of architecture uh, on the back end. So, you know, everything that you've seen kind of from a, you know, I think Tyson mentioned it, right? Dumping all his NAS data, having that being able to ingest that very quickly, it is fundamentally from the fact that we have a scale out, a uh, high performance file system on the back end. So, you know, that's a little bit geeky speak, but that that's you know one way we do it from a data ingest a perspective uh, that you're not going to get from a traditional uh, backup server that usually has an agent, has a proxy, has a media server and all that, you know, basically lots of hops, lots of bottlenecks uh, within the system here. Well, again, ours is you know, designed as a web scale, scale out file system. Uh, you know, number two is, you know, again, the architecture of being able to do, you know, incremental change, change block tracking backups. So, you know, when, you know, the initial ingest obviously takes longer because you have to ingest all that initial data. But, you know, on a daily basis, as data changes, right, that amount is, is, is significantly less. So being able to track those changes and only back up those said changes, right, is, again, very efficient to the system. So that, that's another way we do it. And the third, I, I, third way I alluded to as well, too, is, again, from the back uh, from the deduplication and compression side of things is, you know, sometimes when you're able to do that, right, not only are you saving on uh, the storage costs, but you're saving on the data transfer costs. And th that data transfer may be from on-premise to cloud or cloud to on-premise. That's kind of like the, the, the expense of tr data transfer, but there's also data transfers that go on within within the system right and on the back end again by reducing that right that allows us to transfer that data a lot more quickly too even within our own system so you know again a little bit of geek speak but uh you know it, it's uh, you know kind of fundamentally the way we architected our platform how we implement uh the data movement and the data du duplication really allows again us to back up a lot of data you know very quickly Great, uh, thanks for that, uh, uh, Doug. Uh, so I think we have time for maybe just uh, about one more question. Um, so uh, I, I think there's um, a lot of customers who are running uh, workloads on uh, on AWS and on uh, on EC2. Um, so uh, the question is uh you know can you speak briefly about uh some of the uh benefits of using cohesity uh for ec2 backups yeah for sure so you know one of the things that we implemented is you know direct you know native uh backups through your snapshot apis so i talked about that a little bit i mean there's a few ways you could back it up right you could use you could do manual backups uh, through EC2 and through EBS, you know, and do that, or you can schedule them through uh, Amazon backup. And those are those are you know good solutions. 
uh, on Cohesity allows you to take that one step further, right? N number one is, yes, we leverage the snapshots to, to take that point in time capture the data, but we also ingest it, right? We actually ingest it into our system. Uh, and, and by doing so, you get a couple of benefits. Uh, by taking that snapshot, ingesting it into Cohesity, number one, you're going to get the dedupe and compression benefits, right, that you're not normally going to get. So that in its of itself for customers with large environments, right, you know, we had one customer with a very large environment that it reduced as it reduced their storage costs by, by I think, uh, six or seven X, right? So it's very, very significant just from the dedupe compression standpoint. Uh, number two is you get a consolidated catalog and, and, and policy and schedule management through Cohesity. So instead of you know, setting up a schedule or templates individually for your EC2 instances, you can really kind of you know, discover all of your instances, set, select different policies or apply different policies and templates based on the needs of those groups of VMs or EC2 instances that you need. You might want to do one policy, right, across all your EC2, or you might have different policies that you want to do that. And then you can apply that, you know, basically in a few clicks of a button. So it just makes managing your data backups uh, much more easier. And then, of course, it gets you into a point where where you have all your data in one place, so you can see your backups and your EC2 environments uh, on Cohesity in the cloud, and you can also see your backup and your data sets on premises as well too, all through a single pane of glass. So it really allows our customers to, again, reduce complexity and simplify their overall management and, and operating, uh, you know, operation, operating overhead uh, by leveraging Cohesity. Thank you, Doug. Yeah, that's a that's a great explanation, and uh, you know, shows some of the uh, you know the benefits that customers can get by running uh, the Cohesity platform on uh, on AWS. I think uh, uh, customers can uh, can now see uh, what the, some of those benefits are. Uh, so, with uh, that being said, uh, I want to uh, make sure that everyone. That everyone uh, is uh, able to uh, to learn more. If you look at the uh, the links on your uh, your screen, um, you can uh, you can go here to learn more about uh, AWS storage. You can also learn more about Cohesity on AWS, uh, and uh, you know, and you can also uh, try AWS for free. So, uh, as you can see, uh, going to this link, um, you can sign up for an AWS account if you don't have one, and we have something known as uh, free tier, which gives you access, free access to um, a certain set of uh, resources for the first uh, uh, 12, 12 months of your account. Uh, I also wanted to um, uh, remind everybody to please uh, fill out your uh, satisfaction surveys uh, after the uh, after the web webinar. We take uh, customer feedback uh, very seriously, and we would love to uh, to get your feedback on uh, on the webinar. Uh, with that, I want to uh, thank everybody for uh, for attending today's uh, webinar.